This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, the Maine Association of Nonprofits held its Nonprofit Day at the State House in person for the first time since 2019. Our Matthew Jaronsik was there. More than 100 nonprofit representatives from across the state gathered at the State House Tuesday morning to talk about the importance of the nonprofit sector with legislators. A lot of people think that nonprofits can't do any advocacy, but um, that's not the case in nonprofits can and should participate in our uh, government and our legislative process. Organizations with a wide variety of focuses ranging from homelessness to literacy took part in the event. Together, they hope to improve on what Maine Association of Nonprofits Public Affairs Manager Mary Alice Scott calls cross-sector pollination conversations. We at Maine Association of Nonprofits really like to encourage nonprofits to communicate across different subsectors so that there is an opportunity for those organizations to connect with each other um, and, and better move forward with their own work. Kenna Bunkport Heritage Housing Trust Executive Director Larissa Crockett says the event helps reinforce the purpose of these organizations. Being able to connect with other executive directors, other staff members at nonprofits, and really um, be reminded about why we do this work and the value that this work offers is really meaningful. The Telling Room is a nonprofit organization that works to empower youth through writing and sharing their voices with the world. Its executive director, Christina Powell, says it's these conversations that can make a difference on a large scale. At times we can feel sort of siloed um, and, and getting stuck in the minutia of things. And so to really know that we can have a big impact and to invest, like, how do we lift our communities and our youth and engage people in the process, um, that's really exciting. In Augusta, Matthew Jaronsik, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news, Senator Angus King has joined on as a co-sponsor of the Improving Access to Mental Health Act of 2023. It's a bipartisan bill that would boost access to mental health care services for older Americans specifically. The bill, which was introduced in March, would increase the Medicare payment reimbursement rate for clinical social workers from 75 to 85 percent of the physician fee schedule to help them provide a full range of services to Medicare beneficiaries. The new payment structure would give incentives to licensed professionals while also ensuring social workers the ability to provide psychosocial support services to seniors and nursing home patients through in-person and telemedicine care. The smell of kerosene filled the air in parts of Bangor following a spill this afternoon. Bangor Assistant Fire Chief Casey Perry says someone was transporting a kerosene transporting kerosene in a 275 gallon tank mounted to a truck. He says that tank was actively leaking as it was being transported around town. That had been leaking during transport and they got up here and realized they had a spill so they called us. Uh, we just secured some of the uh, storm drains and called DEP and they're taking care of the situation. The oil spilled along parts of Hammond Street, Main Ave, and Cleveland Street. Meanwhile, the Maine Public Utilities Commission has approved a settlement in Central Maine Power Company's distribution rate case today. Under that settlement, the new rates will be implemented in four phases over a two-year period in an effort to help mitigate the impact on customers. Now, customers will see a bill increase of about 1% or approximately $1.25 a month. The first increase will take place on July 1st. Other increases will take effect on January 1st, 2024, July 1st, 2024, and then again on January 1st of 2025. The total increase will amount to about $5 a month over a two-year period for an average residential customer. Bar Harbor is currently holding a town meeting concerning the municipal budget. Tonight's meeting aims to give Bar Harbor residents a chance to openly discuss their opinions on the budget and suggest any changes they would like to be, like to be made. Residents will vote on the roughly $23.5 million budget after the discussion. Interim Town Manager Sarah Gilbert says she expected the meeting to draw a big crowd. Typically at um, town meeting we have um, 100 to 150 folks uh, come out, but I think there's there's a lot of interest in the budget. So I th we're hoping for, um, you know, maybe tenfold of that. This meeting comes ahead of the town election on June 13th. The ballot will include the election of town council members and a proposed $58 million bond for rebuilding the Connors Emerson School. 
A tiny home park planned in the city of Bangor is finally taking shape. Cement slabs have been poured and walls are going up this week at this new housing development on Hammond Street. Our Jody Hersey takes us there. This housing shortage is real. You know, we've had over 200 applications for 34 homes. Louis Morrison, a realtor and private investor from Herman, says he's seen the need for housing continue to grow over the last 14 years. So when Morrison and his business partner, Luke McCannell, discovered that this mobile home park was only 20% occupied, they thought it'd be a great location to create a tiny home park. Morrison says the goal is to build 34 individual 320 square foot homes on this two and a half acre lot on Hammond Street in Bangor. The cement slabs have already been poured for a handful of homes. Single family dwellings, it's just one bedroom, one bathroom, one open kitchen living room area, um, a parking driveway for one car. Um, you know, where you know you could put two people in there. It's going to be a little tight. They're really, really designed for single-person living. Both Morrison and McCannell worked with city officials to make this housing option a reality. Ann Krieg is the director of community and economic development for Bangor. When you're sort of in a, a housing crisis of not having enough housing units, you know, any type of housing, you know, it, it should be offered to people. Morrison is just as excited as potential buyers for the construction on these tiny homes to be completed. We would hope by midsummer we're able to start putting some folks in these in some of these homes, but you see behind me we still have a lot of work to go. In Bangor, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The city of Ellsworth has partnered with Frenchman Bay Conservancy to expand an area of protected land. R.A.J. Douglas spoke with stakeholders to learn why this particular parcel is so vital to the community. Governor Mills recently announced recipients of the new land for Maine's future conservation projects. Among the nine accepted projects is Branch Lake Expansion in Ellsworth, which will boost the existing protected land by an additional 300 acres. Aaron Daughtery, executive director of Frenchman Bay Conservancy, explains why protecting the land among the southern border of Branch Lake is so important. So the more that we can protect land and prevent nutrient runoff into the water, the more that we can protect the water supply and ensure a healthy water supply for the city. Aside from protecting the city's drinking water, community leaders say the preservation project will also design trail expansions and connections. Public forest here in Ellsworth is an amazing spot. It's a really popular hiking destination. If you walk down the tow road here, you can get into a beautiful old hemlock forest right on the shores of Branch Lake. Ellsworth city planner Matthew Williams says that the city welcomes millions of visitors each year and extending the existing trails could draw more people to the area. They either stay here and, and visit Acadia or if they move through to the island to visit. Um, so all those people use services and businesses in Ellsworth that rely on that drinking water supply. So it's a huge impact. Williams says that there is more work to be done as the city is in the process of applying for federal funding through the Land and Water Conservation Fund to secure the parcel of land. In Ellsworth, A.J. Douglas for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Looking outdoors today, just another kind of gloomy, rainy day, and uh, we've been expecting that this week. Hopefully things will change in the near future, and with that, let's take a first look at our forecast and find out what's coming our way. Thank you, Peter. Your first weather today is brought to you by Webb's RV. Webb's RV, come check out the spring and summer specials we have on RVs and campers, and don't forget we have the sharpest pencil in town. Now let's get back to that weather. It is pretty rainy out there. It's been like that the past week and it's going to continue on to be pretty rainy going into this week. We're going to see that this low pressure system is circulating and is bringing a lot of rain right into the state of Maine. We see uh, Bangor is getting starting to get some showers right now and it's got a lot of the north end of the state is seeing a lot of rain as well. For the highs today, Bangor is actually sitting around 60 degrees and a lot of the warmer temperatures are to the southwest. It's a little chillier up north near Clayton Lake at 52 degrees. Now, looking at the overnight planner for you guys tonight, the temperatures are going to stay around 50 degrees, but that rain is going to continue on throughout the rest of the night. Peter? All right, so more rain. Thanks, Chase. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Heart of Ellsworth is gearing up for their community's Pride Month celebrations. And the Maine State Fire Marshal's Office introduces a new investigative team. Our Grace Blanchard introduces us. Those stories coming right up. 
die of type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take one daily Jardiance. At each day start, as time went on, it was easy to see. I'm lowering my A1C. Jardiance works 24-7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Jardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death, too. Jardians may cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis. Taking Jardians with sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians is really swell. First ever Mazda CX-50, purpose built for the outdoors. With our most advanced driving technology for responsive, consistent performance on road and off that entices you to go further, more often. Find your new Mazda today at Varney Mazda, 260 Hogan Road in Bangor. And discover what Varney Value is all about. Some things are worth waiting for. Something reliable, something loyal, something long-lasting. A six-year warranty? Coyote's got that. One machine for all the dirty work? Count on Coyote. Coyote won't break your heart, and Whittemore and & Sons got the deals that won't break the bank. So quit swiping and settling for less. Slide into Whittemore and & Sons and be treated like family by a family who cares. 257 Waterville Road, Skowhegan. Watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Organizers with Heart of Ellsworth are preparing for the Ellsworth Pride celebration. Organizer Rachel Eve calls this one of the biggest celebrations in the Ellsworth area as hundreds come out to show their solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community. She says more than 30 Ellsworth businesses donated to the event. Eve reflected on the first pride celebration she attended. It was my first experience seeing intergenerational LGBTQ plus people together. I'm not from an area where queer folks can gather in large quantities without being protested. So it was it was so heartening to see folks who are older and younger come together for this one event. The festivities in Ellsworth will be taking place this Sunday from 1130 uh, to 4 p.m. at Knowlton Park in Ellsworth. The Maine State Fire Marshal's Office welcomed a new arson investigative team to its unit. One of the team members was picked especially for his keen sense of smell. Our Grace Blanchard explains. Every year um, we see hundreds of lives being lost due to arson and billions of dollars being lost due to arson as well. State Farm Representative Jennifer Young says they have been offering their arson dog program for the past 30 years. It is the premier training program in North America for accelerant detection canine teams. The program works in partnership with the Maine Forest Services and Fire Marshal's Office to help conduct investigations in arson cases. And recently, welcomed their newest addition to the team, Fire Investigator Andrew Whitney and his canine, Cheeto. Human beings have uh, about five to six million olfactory receptors. That's what we use to smell. Dogs have 225 to 300 million. So they can smell a lot that we can't smell. Whitney and two-year-old Cheeto went through four weeks of training together, and he says building that relationship is very important. We're there with them 24-7 for almost a full month. So that creates a big bond, and it's important because there's a lot of subtleties in his behavior that I need to be able to see when we're working. According to Kent Nelson with Maine Forest Services, 
they have seen a 30 to 40 percent increase in wildland fires in the last four to five years. He says these cases are difficult to solve, but the dogs provide a great service. Uh, by using the fire marshal's office's dogs, who can sniff accelerants, and the main forest service helicopter, we can work together and try to investigate these arsons that are occurring and try to uh, get these people taken care of that are doing them. Cheeto and his friends are about to prove just how brave they are as they climb aboard the helicopter. Part of their canine work requires quick response to emergent situations. Today's demonstration was canine Cheeto's first airborne flight aboard the Maine State Forestry Helicopter, which Nelson says is pivotal in this partnership. That these dogs help us to determine the cause of the fire, and once we know what the cause is, it really helps us with our wildfire prevention efforts. So it's really a great relationship with the fire marshal's office as well as the main forest service. With this new addition, Cheeto is now the third dog to join the fire marshal team. In Augusta, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And a big congratulations to K9 Cheeto and his handler, <laughs> wishing them the best of luck going forward. So cute there. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, downtown Bangor could be getting a little more colorful in the not too distant future. We'll explain. And in sports, the Foxcroft Academy tennis teams are vying for a sweep in the state tournament. We asked their head coach and players how it'd feel to get it all done. That story coming up. If you're waiting for a sign that it's time to finally tackle that window or patio door project you've been putting off, here it is. Renewal by Anderson's incredible Window Replacement Days celebration. Act now because during this limited time event, you'll get stunning custom replacement windows and patio doors for less. Get all the benefits of Renewal by Anderson's exclusive and easy replacement window and door process and save a lot of money while you're at it. This opportunity won't be sticking around for long and neither will these savings. Schedule your free design consultation now and call Renewal by Anderson today. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovations supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking, odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flat beds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit, any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H &H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. Hey, what's up with the big smile? It feels so good to help someone secure better Medicare coverage and lower their costs too. It's the best part of being here at Senior Planning Center. And most people don't know about all the options available with today's Medicare health plans. And many can save money by qualifying for the Medicare Savings Program. We're here to help you get, get all the benefits you're entitled to. With agents and locations across Maine, call today for a free Medicare review at 207-223-6565. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We are going to start on the tennis courts. Wednesday is the state team finals down in Portland, and multiple local teams made it, but Foxcroft Academy is taking both their girls and their boys. The Ponies won both the boys and girls B North Regional on Saturday night, with both teams knocking off the top seeds in the process. It is either team's first state final in a long time and the first in the career of head coach Ryan Den Kurt. He is in his 24th season. To have each happen in the same year for him, it's hard to fathom. 
it's very surreal. I never expected uh, even one chance and one opportunity at this, but to have two is uh, really just an unbelievable experience right now. I can't put into words how much it means after this amount of time and the hard work that's gone on this season with these, uh, with these players, both boys and girls, and I'm just thrilled to uh, be able to be in this spot at this time. And from the players' perspectives, it's just as incredible to have this chance, but it would e be even more incredible if the girls can beat Greeley, the boys can beat Yarmouth, and the ponies can bring home the first two state titles in Foxcroft tennis history. Something like very fun, happy for the team, and for the spoon. It's very special. Amazing. It's surreal. Like, I couldn't even imagine, but hopefully. Well, a lot of pride for sure with our, for our school. The school's never had, had this from a tennis uh, program, so it starts there first. All right, wishing them luck. Let's move on now. Later in the month, a star-studded list of celebrities and athletes will converge on Falmouth Country Club for the Drive for Kids Celebrity Tournament, and one big name was announced on Tuesday morning. The field now includes Boston Bruins goalie and former University of Maine yes. star Jeremy Swayman, who got to play a quick nine at Falmouth on Tuesday, just a few weeks ahead of the real thing. Swayman is an avid golfer, and he enjoyed a spectacular season between the pipes in net. Jeremy will join former Bruins goalie Tuka Rask in the tournament, and he is looking forward to teeing it up and having some fun all for a great cause. Well, I was super excited to get the call and uh, seeing just the first class organization, uh, people putting it together, Brian reaching out. Uh, I couldn't have been more excited to be back up, you know, one, uh, supporting such an incredible cause and uh, just being back in the community of Maine, knowing how much it means to me, getting to spend time up in Orono. I feel like the entire state uh, is home to me. And the Bruins enjoyed a historical regular season, the best in NHL history to be exact, but it fell short of their goal in the first round of the playoffs. But talking to Swayman, he said the Bees are coming back with a vengeance next season. It's, you know, the goal wasn't achieved, and that's something that's going to stick with me, and I'm sure a lot of the teammate, or my teammates uh, moving forward. Uh, you know, knowing that and the experience that we gained this year, it's an exciting time because we're going to be coming back, you know, twice as strong, and we understand that the core guys we have here uh, are going to be here for a while. All right, I'll hold them to it. Looking forward to next season. That's all the time we have for sports. Here is Chase Ropenak with your full five-day forecast. Thank you, Tyler. Today's main weather is brought to you by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit our ranch and meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. Now let's get into the weather. We have a big low pressure system that has been slowly backtracking into the state and is bringing a lot, a lot of rain. It has been this past week and it's going to continue into the next week. So this low pressure system, just as I said, has been slowly backtracking into the state and now it's about to move out. So it's moving just at the same speed as a turtle would on the, uh, crossing the road. So what this means is that you need to be, be prepared. Make sure you have your umbrellas ready with you whenever you're traveling out and about and make sure you know to, the traffic concerns whenever it's very rainy out there for you guys so but we're going to look into the temperatures now. Bangor sitting at 60 degrees with a lot of the warmer temperatures down to the southwest. We can see 70 in Sanford, which is pretty warm compared to where we're at. And then it's actually a lot cooler up north near Clayton Lake at 52 degrees. As we go into tomorrow, it's going to, uh, it's going to cool down just a, a slight bit. Bangor is going to be around 50. Those warmer temperatures are going to cool off quite a bit to the southwest. Portland will be at around 55. And Clayton Lake is going to be sitting at 46 degrees up north. So the temperature trend throughout the rest of the week, we're going to see those mid to upper 50s, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. As we get into Friday, we're going to start to see the 60s, Saturday 66. And then on Sunday is when that rain is finally going to start to pass. We might still see some slight showers, but the temperature is going to ramp up to 76 degrees, and it will slightly cool down on Monday at around 74. But still, it's going to be a lot of beautiful, beautiful weather and warm temperatures at the end of the weekend. So for the future forecast, we're starting to see some scattered showers, but a lot of that rain is still in the area. You can see by Bangor, there's a lot of precipitation, but it's going to be starting to get a little more scattered uh, by the end of tonight into tomorrow, but that rain is definitely going to stick around, so make sure you have your umbrellas ready with you. It's going to be a rainy week. Now, going into the wind speeds, that we, or sorry, the future rainfall, we have around an inch of rain near the uh, Bangor area, just north of that, but only around a half inch near Bangor. Holton's going to have a, around an inch as well, so there may be some localized flooding in those areas. Be prepared for that. Um, but other than that, it's not going to be too bad. This, this rain is only around light to moderate. So 
As we go into the wind speeds now, we're going to see Bangor is a little breezy. We have winds from the northwest at 17 miles per hour, and it's pretty windy down uh, to the southwest. Portland, you can see 20 miles per hour, and even up north as well, 22. So this low pressure system is bringing some strong winds. Make sure you keep an eye out for that. Now, going into tonight's we're going to see the low is going to hit a chilly 49 degrees, so scattered showers are still going to hang around, and the winds are going to be coming from the northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Going into tomorrow, the high is going to be around 55 degrees. That rain is going to continue, unfortunately, and the winds from the northwest will still have to be around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Going into your extended forecast, we're going to see the rain is going to continue throughout the rest of the week, but the temperatures are going to slightly, slightly come up to the mid to upper 60s, and then by Sunday, that's when that slight, the, we'll have a slight rain chance in the early morning, and it should taper off with some partly cloudy skies and temperatures in the mid 70s. Peter? All right, just got to get through the rest of this week. Thanks, Chase, and more to come after the break. Stay with us. We live in the oldest continuous democracy on earth. But today, political parties act like they own our votes. Blind loyalty is the opposite of choice, and choice is what real democracy is all about. No Labels was formed to unite Democrats, Republicans, and independents to solve our country's biggest problems, bringing more choices to voters and more voices to the national conversation. Find your voice with us. Join No Labels today. Comfort Shoes and More is your destination for all of your spring and summer footwear essentials. We have trained podorthists on site, and our friendly, caring, and knowledgeable staff will make sure you are fitted with the proper footwear that is perfect for you. We have Power Lace Shoes, the self-lacing shoe activated by your body weight. Just step in and go. We have many new sandal styles from Hoka, Teba, Power Step, Stride, and more. Come visit Comfort Shoes and more in Newport to find the perfect shoes for you. Restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxpangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, and priceless memories. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Let Hellman's Bakery put a smile on your face with their tasty offerings of breads, baked beans, lasagna, touche, and turkey pies, fruit and cream pies, wedding and specialty cakes, pastries, and more. Hillman's, your hometown bakery, Fairfield. Tonight, as more GOP hopefuls enter the 2024 presidential race, are their platforms strong enough to turn them into frontrunners? More Americans turn to the most watched program on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. Welcome back. A sanctuary in Bucksport is helping a herd of farm animals live out the rest of their lives in comfort, but they need a little more help. Coastal Dreams Farm and Sanctuary has rescued seven horses, three dogs, two mini pigs, two goats, and a flock of birds. Now they're looking for some volunteers to come to the rescue. Currently, the staff on the farm only consists of its co-founder and director, Alicia Krutileski, and three volunteers, but more are needed to make sure all the animals get the care they deserve. Along with farm volunteers, Krutileski is looking for foster homes for many of the dogs at the sanctuary so she can make room and save more pups from kill shelters down in Florida. There is an opportunity for anybody and everybody. We can find a spot for you here, and we would love for you to join our team.
volunteer but want to help, Coastal Dreams is also looking for donations of all kinds. For more information about volunteering or donating, you can message Krudaleski through the Coastal Dreams Farm and Sanctuary Facebook page. And finally tonight, a new art installation could be coming to downtown Bangor. A canopy of multicolored umbrellas known as the Umbrella Project might soon be hanging over Cross Street in Bangor. The Downtown Bangor Partnership began exploring this type of art display created by a Portuguese company three years ago. The goal is to bring color as well as foot traffic to a part of the downtown area, which is often frequently overlooked. And so this, you know, is a, another addition to making the downtown really vibrant and exciting. The installation will be considered at tonight's Bangor City Council meeting. And that's going to do it for us tonight on ABC 7 News at 6. We thank you all for joining us and stay dry out there.